Okay, so in this exercise, we're now going to do something fun with a couple of things that you guys have already learned. So we're going to take two and maybe three exercises, combine them together, and then have a new exercise. So you're going to learn something new this time. So the things we're going to combine are topographic maps, which you already kind of learned how to do. You learned how to draw the topography and learned how to interpret it. We're going to look at the, what you did with the tank. Okay, so the, uh, the pollution tank where you got to look and see how pollutants flowed underground. We're going to put that together a little bit different on the contouring than you did in that. This time we're going to look at the physical part of the contouring and then maybe the leaky landfill because we're going to be looking at landfills. So we're going to put those three things together and we're going to, you're going to learn a little bit extra new and then we're going to put it in a game that's going to be a lot of fun. You'll see. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to learn a little bit about contours that you already know, but we're going to make them a little different. Okay, so what we're going to turn them into is structure contours instead of just plain old topographic contours. So what I'm going to start off with is this little hill that we put together. And you can see it's got a white face on the front, but look how it's got a hill. So it comes down at an angle like this, and here's what the side looks like. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this around, and we're going to do a little bit of drafting on top of this just to illustrate what we're looking at. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler here and I'm going to measure a certain height on the hill. Okay, so the first height I'm going to measure is about six inches. So if I go across here, six inches hits right about there. I pull a little mark at six inches. Now I'm going to go to the other side until I hit six inches right about there. And now I can take the ruler and I'm going to put it across between these two points and I'm going to draw a line all the way across like so, and that now is a six inch contour line. Okay, so that's a contour line that measures everything above my datum, which is the table here, six inches now above. That line is an equal height of six inches all the way around. That's a contour line, right? That's how you would label it. I can really label that the six inch contour line. Okay, now we know that at the surface that'd be fine. That's just a hill slope. But suppose this wasn't at the surface. Suppose this was underground. Okay, so now we're underground, and this hill, instead of being a hill slope, is a bed, maybe just a, a bed of sandstone or something. Or maybe it's a fault plane. Or maybe it's any other plane that you can see underground. That's what it looks like. And now we can draw a contour line on that geologic feature. That is now what we call a structure contour. Okay, and we could draw another contour line if we want. We could then go down to five inches. Okay, so suppose I go across and I see five inches there, about. And I go across to the other side and I look for about five inches there. And I can draw in another contour line on there at the five inch contour line, like so. Well, almost. And you can see that those two contour lines now are parallel to each other. And that's the way it goes. They will always be parallel to each other if we have a planar surface. So notice that's the way they'll go. And the spacing on those will reflect how steep it is. So if they're close spaced, it would be a steep hill. If they're wide spaced, it would be a shallower hill. This is the spacing we have of an inches for something that leans this way. Now, in addition, because this is some kind of plane underground, like a bed, the direction that these go in, north, south, east, or west, is also the strike. Okay, so that is the strike of the, of the bed or the layer, whatever it is, is parallel to this. Okay, so that's something you may have learned in planet Earth, but nonetheless, that line, and we can measure it relative to north, is going to be the strike. Now we can also know with that the other term we have, which is perpendicular, is called the dip. And that's the maximum angle that this thing is at. So you could kind of, if you went this way, it's zero. If you went this way, it's some other angle. Who knows what the angle would be? The maximum angle is the direction that a ball would roll down the hill. That's the maximum direction. So if we put the ball up here and let it go, notice the way it rolls. Okay, I can write a little arrow down here like so, and that would be the dip angle, okay? So this would be the strike, that's my six inch contour, and also the strike, and this is the dip. 
and the direction that my ball would flow or anything else goes is directly perpendicular to that strike and directly down the dip. That's the way everything sets up on one of these layers. Okay, so now you learned about structure contours, okay? And any planar surface underground can have structure of contours on it, and we can use that to, to interpret something. And what we're going to combine it with is the, your knowledge of groundwater, okay? As you know, when you go down in the ground, you start digging a hole. First, there's just air in the soil. There's no water. And you get to a certain point, and all of a sudden, underground is saturated with water. You've seen this at the beach. You dig a hole in the beach, it's all got sand at the top, and all of a sudden the bottom fills up with water. You have now gone into the saturated zone, and the top of that water is what we call the water table. Okay, and so the water table can be another planar feature that we can see underground. Now what I'm going to do is illustrate that with this board right here, and you can see it's a flat board, and it's got BBs in here, and they're all blue. These are going to be water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them on this diagram that we put together with our structure contours, and notice the way that the water flows with respect to the structure contours. So we'll stick it off like so, and notice that all of those BBs are flowing directly downhill. So if we looked at the structure contour, they goes directly down perpendicular to those structure contours. So now we can tell which way the groundwater is flowing by just having structure contours and knowing which way is down. Learned how structure contours work and you learned how they work with the water table. Let's apply it to a real life situation. Okay, so what we have here is a satellite image, Google Earth, of an area up in the Meadowlands, okay? So you can see right in here is the Meadowlands landfill. You can see all of the houses and the roads and a river along in here, all through this area. And we're gonna see if that Meadowlands landfill, which can be leaking toxic waste, pollution, into the groundwater table. We have a lot of towns around, as you can see, a lot of people living. How is it gonna affect them? Who's gonna be in trouble if this thing, if, as the pollution leaks out? So next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the satellite image and take a look at just a grid with all the areas in it. So you can see there's our landfill in the middle. You can see some of the towns around Patterson and Toto and Prospect Park and Fairlawn. Those are all the locations of the towns around this landfill. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to learn how to predict which way the flow is going and how much. And what we're going to do is something called a three-point problem. Okay, so a three-point problem is how you can use the well data to be able to figure out what's going on. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take a, some data from each of these wells. And as you go along, this is what you'll do too. So if I look at D12, which is right here, I'm going to see that we have a 14-foot, that's the depth of the water table, and two is how much pollution it has. So I'm going to write the 14 down in this color, one, four. Okay, and that's my location of that. And I can actually write the two because I'm gonna use that later. I'll write my two down here for now. Okay, so that's the first point. Maybe I'll put an X by it so I know exactly where it is. So that's my first point. Next thing I'm gonna do is get my next one. And as you can see, it's F13. Okay, so F13 comes up and here's 13. There's F, I'm gonna put another mark right there, and I'm gonna look and it says that it's 15 feet deep. And my concentration is one, okay? Next, that one is done, I'm gonna try my third well, three point problem, we need three wells, and that's G11. Okay, so I can go up to 11 and G is right here. G11. And it says that my depth to my water table is 10 feet. And my amount of pollution is zero. Okay, so right there, I have three points that I can now analyze. Now, the way you do a three-point problem then is the first thing I do is I connect up my three points and make a triangle. So I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna put, use my ruler, connect the three points,
and there's my triangle. Okay, so that now marks what the areas I'm going to use. Now, what we can see is we have a we have three different levels, right? So there's going to be a highest, a lowest, and one in the middle. Okay, and so you can see the high, the deepest one. And normally, when we do this, we have to do it a little bit different. We wanted the depth has to be taken from some relative to sea level or something like that. So we can't just use drill depth. But in this exercise, we're just going to use drill depth. You want to do it more, a little more detailed? Take an advanced course in geology. I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so in this case, we're just going to, uh, we're just going to take the three. And we can see that the 15 is the deepest, the 14 is the middle, and 10 is the shallowest. Okay, so what we're going to do then is we know that this one is in the middle, the 14, and we can scale off the distance along here, and we can see that we, if we go up, it's six inches. If we go up an inch and a half along here, that should correspond to about 14 feet. So we've scaled this off that five feet is going to be divided into six inches. We're then going to find where on that, we're going to scale it off and interpolate and find where 14 should be. And if we find the 14, then we can connect the dots between 14 feet, and we now have drawn in the 14-foot structure contour on the water table. Now, we can go up again and measure a little farther up, another inch and a half or so, and we can come to here, and that is where 12 feet goes in. So what we want to do is then draw a line that's about parallel to the first one, and you can see I'm going to use that to line up my ruler. And then I'm going to draw in a parallel line, and that will be my 12-foot contour. Okay, so right there is my 12-foot contour. And in fact, I can see where 10 is. Again, 10 is going to be about parallel to my 12-foot contour. And so we can now see that those are our structure contours. It's showing that it's getting deeper in this direction. So we know now that the groundwater flow on this is perpendicular to the, to the contours and directly down gradient. Okay, so you can see you can go across the entire, we can, we can contour this entire diagram and show the depths of the water table any place along it. So even though right now we're right down from the metal ends, we could have easily gone in the other direction and had the contour all the way up this way and then had the flow direction go that way, or maybe the contours would be in some different orientation. For this orientation, we see that the flow is this way and going down in this direction. Okay, so what we also see then is anything that's going to come out of here is going to make a plume in that direction, basically parallel to my flow line and it's going to come out like so. So we can see already that we have a two in here, so some of that pollution is hitting in here. These will be from zero to four. That's how much you will get as far as your pollution concentrations go. So you can see you get no pollution here, which makes sense because it's off the side of the uh, Meadowlands landfill. And so therefore, since the flow is going this way, nothing is coming over to there. But notice from here, this can have some flow spreading out from that direction down, gradient direction, and can spread in here. So what we want to do then is we can delineate where we have higher levels of pollution by drilling a bunch of other wells, not so much to find out the structure contours anymore. We already solved that problem with a three-point problem, but now we can figure out where the plume has gone. Okay, so now you get to play the game. Now you guys are all professional geologists. You're going to work for a consulting firm. And this is what geologists do, especially in this area. you got to figure out which way those pollutants go. you got to help delineate how far the pollution has gone. And then you have to bid on contracts. That's what you're going to wind up doing. So you get to do a little bit of outdoor work and collect some information. And then you take it in and you analyze it. So you guys are going to analyze it. We're going to give you the work. So you're going to have the same map that you got, except we're going to give you a 
map that's a little one. And so each one of your, the whole class is going to break up into groups. Okay, and each one of your groups is going to be a company. Okay, you're going to be an environmental company, and you're each going to get one of these. Okay, and so that's the starting point. Same grid system as you have on there. Same landfill in the middle. It's exactly the same. Okay, and then you're going to be able to drill wells. Any one of these intersections is a well. You're going to go, once you get the well information, you tell them what well you want to drill. So in this case is F13. And then you're going to get a depth to the water table, okay? And the second number is going to be the pollutant, okay? So the pollutant goes from zero to four. Four being the most polluted, zero being not polluted at all. So those are kind of your information that you get, and that's how we're going to play the game. Once you have that and you plot them on the map, you then can take a erasable pen, you can draw in your structure contours, you can plot up all of your concentrations of pollutants, and you can delineate that pollution in this area around the Meadowlands. Okay, now every game has to have some rules. So the first rule you have is that you can only drill one well once, okay? The second rule is, and I'll tell you this now, everybody gets a different scenario. So do not bother trying to get the information from somebody else because everybody's got a different setup, okay? So second rule, don't look at other people's stuff. Okay, the third rule is you can only do one thing each time. So once you get your information, your group goes back and sits down, and you got to wait until we go around again until you get the next chance to drill. Okay, the, I, the object of this game is to be able to delineate that plume in the least amount of wells. Okay, the faster you can do it, the cheaper you come in under budget, then you get the contract. So you get awarded the contract from the state or the company that wants to do the work if you can show me that you can understand the way groundwater works and pollution. You can quickly design your pro project and quickly delineate your pollutant and know where it's going to go. So good luck to you. I want to see some new geologists coming out of this group.